Welcome to the Play 21 Mini Let's Play and today we have with us a boss from the US with his game Twilight Tower and ah, welcome. Howdy. So uh, to kick this off, because we only have 10 minutes, I prepared a little warm up for you, a sentence and then you can try to finish it. If you're ready, we start. Okay. All right. Okay. So we start off easy with this morning I drank water. My main occupation is design. I would describe myself as eccentric. My superpower is Oh man. Uh <laughs> superpower is to find a different path. Wow, okay. Um the thing I'm holding in my hand most of the time is Probably my mouse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> during the pandemic, I sat right here. And after the pandemic, I will sit right here. <laughs> okay, last, uh, last two. I'm creating interactive works because I, w I want to uh, help people experience the childlike joy I experienced from interactive media when I was growing up. And the biggest one, uh, the future of games will be. I think, uh, you know, if technology works out and everything, that we'll probably abandon our fleshy bodies and become minds that just need entertainment. So the future of games is basically all of existence. Whoa, okay. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, very nice. Um, okay, I would say um, uh, let's jump in into the game. Here we have it, uh, Twilight Tower has some very nice music in the background and uh, yeah um, just click on play and uh, yeah can you can you tell me what it is about what I'm doing here yeah so this uh, this this game started as a game jam that was about the color palette which is called Twilight and um, in the initial I got together with the team we have a we have an artist and a musician and we decided uh, we were just like looking at the color palette and the musician was playing this like riff that's this the music i don't know if you'd be able to hear it uh, yes. here yeah. but uh, okay so it's uh, you know it's very mel melodramatic a little bit and it's like uh, i wanted to recreate the sensation of when the sun starts setting people start getting nervous um especially outside because it's like the time the creatures start coming in and you need to start finding your cave or whatever and, and uh, settle down so we started going off of that feeling coming from the music and the color palette and it turned into this concept of being put into this otherworldly tower that's like giant and you don't understand it at all and there's a sand coming up from the bottom that will uh, basically kill you and uh, so you're you're essentially you're imprisoned in this strange place you don't know what's going on there's otherworldly creatures all around you and you are just constantly trying to climb to escape the sand that's coming after you now the the feeling is supposed to be that you are trying to survive so you're you're trying to make decisions that will help help you hopefully survive as you continue to climb up now in this uh in this game you're you're looking for ways up so if you can see your floor on the left is it's telling you it's telling you how high you are in the sand uh, distance from the sand up in the top middle is telling you how far the sand is behind you and you so you are you are you also have your your stats on the left like your exhaustion and all that and those are going to be going up as you try to climb and you're trying to mitigate those while climbing at the same time which leads to some morally gray area choices where you might have to do something evil um, to continue to survive or you can do the right thing and potentially lose so um, some people have told me that it almost felt like when playing this game that it was corrupting them a little bit uh, it's not necessarily my goal but it's more of just to show um, the uh, intricacies of moral gray area mm -hmm. it's also interesting because you're, you're not doing this alone right there is this friend with you 
Um, and uh, yes, what, what kind of decisions or you know what what kind of relationship do they have? Yeah, so friend is uh, kind of presented more as a uh, more righteous person in this. So he, he every time you you hit a campsite, he will tell you more about himself and ask you about yourself. Um, you play as the prisoner who's not very forthcoming with details initially and so friend is just kind of filling it in so you basically uh the goal was to make you build a bond with friend to really uh to, to trust friend friend also has a percentage chance to save you from from problems like if some rocks are falling he might push you aside get hurt himself or uh if uh, you know an, a creature is about to come out and bite you he might uh Uh, pull you away before that happens so like friend is actually kind of a crutch in this situation and but the problem is sometimes you can't survive very well and you have to sort of betray him a little bit oh. and uh so we we started pushing it more and more towards that so like towards the end of this game if you start losing you can actually kind of throw friend under the bus to to save yourself so oh. <laughs> so and And if you hover over, distrust the number on there. It's the um, it's the only one that doesn't tell you what happens if you uh, get it to the, to max. It just says don't do it. Mm. But um, I could spoil that for you. Um, nah, no, if don't. You... <laughs> okay. Of course. Um, but um, what led to decision? What led to the decision that you called him friend at the beginning? Uh, because that's of course you know. Uh, suggesting that he is friendly towards you and it, it's not just a random character you meet right yeah it's uh, these are kind of archetypes like the prisoner archetype is like they've they've been in prison so it kind of sets the tone that this place is a prison um, and more personally it's like they are a prisoner of, of their own like impulses and their guilt and stuff like that and friend is set up to be like Hey, you can trust me. I'm friend. I help you do things. You know, like it, it's it's really just a set of bond there. And and, and narrative, um, we've kind of made it to where he he just kind of calls everyone friend, and so that's what people call him back because uh, people here don't seem to really have names. They mm. just kind of have, they embody archetypes. Yeah, but it's, it's super cool that this you know friendship is there somehow uh, the, the core of everything. Um, but uh, what about the tower itself? Is, is the tower some kind of metaphor for you? Or could it be for players? Uh, it is... It's... It's meant to be... It's... It's meant to be basically a, a place for us to put all of our our ideas. So I guess in a way it is a metaphor because it, it uh, it's like a storage container for uh, these concepts, like the archetypes and stuff. It's, The, uh, the makeup of it itself is meant to be its own its own world away from the world that we know. So we just wanted to pull away uh, from that. So, um, you know, we've got a lot of different sort of metaphors we've, we've played with. One is like the sand rising is actually uh, the embodiment of uh, the prisoner's guilt from his uh, past uh, crimes, which he'll tell you more about as you as you get into these uh, campsites and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. And um, one thing more, maybe, as I saw on the blog, um, there was it, it was a different game before, right? And then you reworked it a lot uh, to get where it is now. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, and that's kind of why I was hesitating, because I'm trying to like divide this, the stories from what this is versus what it's turning into. So I'm mm -hmm. trying not to. Uh, Pull that out too much but, but yeah we are developing the story further now and uh, there's a lot of a lot of different kind of concepts here like uh there there's a ton of people that are here and they come from all sorts of places and may not have a shared culture or shared language or whatever but somehow through the tower the tower is making them able to understand each other and we have these other creatures otherworldly creatures called the uh, the shapers which are kind of like godlike creatures that sort of uh, pull strings and do things around here. And they have rules. They're not allowed to do whatever they want, but they kind of just play with you and toy with the people inside. And uh, rumor has it they come from the infinite void in the center of the tower, 
Ooh, okay. uh, from some, some other world. And uh, uh, not many people have made it to the top. In fact, some people have been here for potentially centuries and they've completely, they've lived so many different lives at this point that they just don't uh, make sense. Because if you die, you basically, you, you, you come back the next day. So this is a place where death has no meaning. So uh, the, the message that often comes across is, uh, you know, there's things worse than death and, you know, you, you haven't hit the lowest lows yet and it can always get worse. So. I see. So it's a bit reassuring and mm -hmm. spending hope. Yeah, the, um, oh, nice. we were, we've, we've been talking about how like the, uh, the, the, uh, the bottom layers kind of symbolize the uh, loss of hope and then going up kind of embodies like the stages of grief and getting over that. Uh, so. Wow. And here's a game that has a completely opposite tone. Yes, uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's true. So uh, you're also in the, in the exhibition with a with a second game, which is called uh, Audio Pronouncer. Ah! Just, ah! <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, you got to kind of uh, waver your voice a little bit. Yeah. Uh, let's see what what microphone do I have? Uh, this one. no, not this one. There we go. Um, oh, okay, okay. So let's see. Bar touch the top when you're loud. <clears throat> Is that correct? Okay, and then they shouldn't dance. They don't. They don't? Okay, there. There we go. Okay, this maybe Yeah, this sounds better. Okay, so yeah, and what do we hear what do we do in this game? <laughs> it's probably very easy it says to explain. right there on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, this one, I, I went for more of a Nintendo design aesthetic, mm -hmm. like trying to just get across a sensation of joy through a new type of control. This was also made for a game jam, uh, the GMTK jam. And uh, the theme was out of control. So uh, I, I thought what would be better than trying to, to yell at something to tell it what to do and it not quite following your orders. Um, yeah, and it's pretty cool because it's not just, you know, uh, gelling uh, for the loudness of it, but it's also kind of taking the, uh, uh, I don't know, the spectrum of the voice. It's very hard to control, as you can see, but whoa, whoa, you can like a, a little bit change directions if, you, if you're good at singing, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you can do whoa. a high, high to low or low whoa. to high. Wow. Um, <laughs> A lot of people told me their magic words that, that helped them a lot. Like boing was a, a favorite for boing, a lot of people. If you... Boing. Oh, yes. Boing. Oh, mm. that's a very good and... tip. <laughs> <laughs> I think cheese was, uh, it gets a lower frequency. Cheese, 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 cheese. Yes. Yeah. So the lower frequencies are on the left. And then if you go higher, yeah. they go to the right. So you have to... oh. some people actually told me they couldn't get a high enough Ooh. register to hit the right Ooh. side. And some people told me they couldn't get a low enough what? register to hit the, the left side, so... Yeah, this is, you know, the, the, the most frustrating thing when you uh, go in the direction uh, of, the, of, of the goal and then you just slide under it or over it. Mm -hmm. ah, oh. Yeah. There we go. Um, but have you uh, noticed uh, people playing it like, like in a group as well? I have never actually been able to see people playing this live before. Oh, interesting. So this would be probably very cool to see how people at play play it because it's uh, like in, a, in yeah. a window with some microphone in front of it and uh, people can gather up and play together. You're doing great with just talking about it. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I really, really wanted uh, my nephew to play this, but my... Uh, my brother refuses to let him come and yell at his computer for a while. So uh, we're, yeah. <laughs> we're working on that. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, so coming back. Uh, so in general, this, this is a very different experience. Uh, do you have some kind of uh, design goal in mind or, or thinks uh, what, what you're looking for while developing games? Um, I go for more of the what am I feeling at the time and how can I uh, put that into what I'm working on. So, like when I was when I was working on this game, for example, I was I had just uh, tried VR chat the night before, and I was meeting a bunch of people, and everybody was all you know laughing, having a good time. So then I was like, you know, I'm gonna do I'm gonna join that game jam the next day, and I just was like, 
what could I do that's kind of based on what I just felt, you know, last night or whatever. And so that mm -hmm. was this. This was basically me meeting people in VR chat and having a great time with them and then turning it into a game um, right after. And then uh, Twilight Tower is more like, you know, what what would match this like this color palette and this feeling of the sun going down and this this music that we're hearing right now. So um, I'm very much on the idea that you you start with a concept that's a feeling, a mood, and then you try to turn it into mechanics and mechanics that can be generated in a, in a safe timeline rather than take like 20 years to, to make and then uh, start to build on that. Um, so, and then it's all about the organic development of just stumbling in the dark until you, you sort of find your way. So it's, a very uh, it's cool all about the process yeah, for me. It's a very cool spot to start with your game ideas. Wow, interesting. Um, so there's one uh, final big question at the end, uh, because it's our festival topic. Um, what do you think is more true and why? Uh, games influencing societies or games reflecting society? I think games influence a lot of society. And maybe that's just me because I grew up playing video games. So it's like, it's changed the way I live. Obviously, I'm very game focused sure. and so. But I mean, you can't you can't have one without the other, right? So, True. but <laughs> however, I think games have a massive influence on society, especially today. And a pandemic kind of proved like we needed something to do while we were locked up inside. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. So um, I hope uh, everybody at the Play Valley or the festival, if you're there physical, uh, physically, um, did you? Uh, I lost my, my, my sentence, damn it. <laughs> so uh, please check it out. Uh, there's two amazing games here. And is there something else up in the works, uh, something you want uh, the audience to check out as well? Uh, well, Twilight Tower, we're working on a, a big, big version of it. I just released a giant update on it. Um, so uh, we're, if, you go to, if you go to play Twilight Tower on itch right now, then you can find links to all the other stuff. Great. Well, then, uh, thanks for being here and uh, have a great evening and uh, see you at the festival. Yeah, thank you. Bye bye. Cheers.